talk about something that I think will be very useful for us. I want to talk about gaining new strength uh, like eagles. Gaining new strength like eagles. And uh, we know that uh, the Bible talks a lot about eagles. In fact, when I was uh, trying to uh, Google and understand some verses about eagles, I saw about 30 to 40 verses in the Bible that just talk about eagles. Uh, and I was, I, was, I was wondering whether the Bible speaks about any other bird or animal in so many passages apart from it speaking about eagles. And I was trying to figure out what is so great and important about eagles. I, I know some factors about eagles. I know a little bit about what they are. But I started watching some videos on eagles. These last many days I was sitting down and just watching documentaries on eagles. And trust me, church, I just want to, I want to encourage you this morning. If you've never ever watched documentaries on eagles, please do it this week. Take time off, start watching the lifestyle, the characteristics, the traits, the qualities uh, of an eagle. It's amazing. It's an amazing creature. It's an amazing bird. And, and that's, that's why I figured why the Bible kept talking again and again about eagles. And in Isaiah chapter 40 also talks about uh, the, 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 the ways of the eagle and how those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength like eagles. And so gaining new strength like eagles. And, and, and before I share some of the verses, which I might continue in the next uh, following weeks, I just thought we'll understand the traits of the eagle, how it pertains to our Christian walk. Traits of an eagle and how it pertains to our Christian lifestyle, our Christian walk. Because if you take the eagle and if you take us, there's lots to learn from the eagle. Even though it's a bird, even though it's, it's beautiful, it's majestic. Don't look at how beautiful and majestic it is. Look at its traits, look at its, it, look at its qualities, its characteristics. That will help you understand a lot of Christian principles and biblical truths about what God is trying to help us understand. Now, the basic gist of the eagle analogy is that it's the, the first thing to know is eagles don't flap their wings. Have you realized that? Every bird will flap its wings. To go higher and higher. The eagle will never do that. Very rarely you'll find an eagle doing this. What the eagle will do is, it's got such a big wingspan, it will stretch its wings out almost like, a, like an airplane. It will never do this. You'll see crows and sparrows doing this. Eagles will just do this and what they'll do is, they don't flap to fly, they soar to fly. I was looking at the meaning of soar. The Bible talks about soaring like eagles. I was looking up the, the, the dictionary about soaring. Soaring says, without any effort, without any move and trust, without any energy, just helping to glide and to go higher and higher. Now how does the eagle do that? We'll get to know that. So what's the difference between other birds and eagles, very simple. The eagle, because of its size and weight, listen to me carefully, because of its size and weight, if it flaps its wings in weakness and in, and in tiredness, it will die. So while it's still small, it teaches itself not to waste energy, but to make sure that it uses its wingspan to soar. And that's how it takes in and it, 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 it reduces its energy and saves much of its body weight to just glide. And that's the first uh, analogy of what an eagle is. Now why am I speaking this? Sometimes as Christians, we do a lot of things. <laughs> let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. No, 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 we don't get strength by doing 150 religious things. Let's, let's understand the eagle. The Bible talks about a lot of these things for help, to help us understand a lot of things. And it says, it soars. And this morning, if, if you and me are flapping our wings and trying to do things to go higher and higher or get closer to God, God's saying, you're not going to get too high. Did you know that the eagle is the only bird that gets to about 10,000 feet? No other bird gets to 10,000 feet. That's where planes fly. 
Of course, they fly about 25,000 to 30,000 feet, but normally when they take off and they cruise, planes fly about 10,000, 15,000 feet. It says the eagle gets to that height without flapping its wings. And even other birds who flap their wings cannot even get to half that height. Now, if we want to gain strength in God, if we want to gain strength in our spirits and our souls and our bodies and our minds, it is not about flapping our wings many times. It's not about doing things many times. It's not about how many times we fast and how many times we pray and how many times we read the Bible and how many times we go to church and go for all. It's not about that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that's not important. I'm saying that is very important. It's good to keep reading the Bible and praying. And it's always important to do those things. But you know, sometimes we think the more we do this, the more we get close to God. No, we don't get close to God that way. We get close to God in ways where we understand where we get our strength. The eagle understands where it gets the strength. It doesn't waste its energy on the things that are not needed. It uses other things to get its energy. And so this is the first basic gist of what eagles do. They soar. And eagles are born, since they're born big, they have to be able to maintain their strength for a long period of time. You know what's the lifespan of an eagle? Any guess what's the lifespan of an eagle? Any guess? It lives for about 30 to 35 years, and then it gets old, and then it goes on to a high mountain and starts pulling off all its feathers and break its beak. And there's a regeneration of all these things and a renewal and a rebirth. And again it comes down and lives for another 35 years. Amazing. Simple bird lives for 70 years as much as a human being lives. That's the ego. There's a lot of spirituality in the ego and that's the reason why the Bible talks a lot about it. What I want to help us understand this morning is we are that ego. Listen to me very carefully. We are the ego. The second is the wings that the ego represents are our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ. Point number one, you are that ego. Your faith and your belief are that wingspan that you have. <coughs> and the third, the wind thermals. I want to talk about the wind thermals. Remember I told you that the eagle does not flap its wings, it, it just soars. The, the way the eagle soars is it waits for a particular wind thermal. There's a wind thermal that helps the eagle to lift higher. So until the eagle finds that wind flow and thermal, it's called a wind thermal, until the eagle finds it, it'll still wait on the mountain or the high treetop perch waiting for that wind to come and only then it will, and it can wait there for days before it catches that wind. Can you imagine what kind of a bird that will be? No matter whether it's hungry or no matter, it is not going to come down because it knows if it comes down without the wind, wind turbulence, it will have to do this and sooner or later it is going to get tired and it can get weak and it can die. It waits for the wind thermal. Once the wind thermal comes, it, it, it cruises and goes higher and higher just with that wind. You are the eagle. Your faith, your belief is your wingspan. And the thermal, the wind thermal that we're talking about is the Holy Spirit. You see, as an eagle with your faith and your belief, if you keep fluttering and flapping without the Holy Spirit who is the wind thermal, you're going to be weak, you're going to be weakened, you're going to get tired, you're going to get frustrated, and you're going to just leave everything and maybe run away because you're so tired and frustrated. And this morning I feel God speaking to all of us saying, I want you to soar on wings like eagles, not flap, not flutter, not waste energy. But to be able to do what the eagle does, you have to be able to wait for the Holy Spirit, which is that wind thermal. And if you jump and try anything before that wind thermal, which is the Holy Spirit, everything is going to go wrong and weakness is going to set inside. And so this, this being the background, let's understand and continue of what God is trying to tell us through the life, the trait of an eagle, and how our spiritual lives 
can fit into understanding where we get what we get from. There's a lovely verse in Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 that says, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You see, the eagle absolutely follows that. It doesn't follow its might, it doesn't follow its power, it follows the wind thermal. Even though the eagle is a very strong creature, it can flap, it can do it. But it makes, it, 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 it makes sure that it uses its understanding and its strength in the right way and waits for it. The third thing you must catch on this analogy is that besides the fact that we are eagles and the wind thermals represent the Holy Spirit is what the wings of the eagles represent. The wings of the eagle represent our faith and belief. And the bottom line is if we do not have that faith and belief in God to take flight of the Holy Spirit in order to be led and empowered by Him for service, we will have everything crumbling down and weakening. Many times we do things with our own strength. Many times we do things with our own capacity. We do things with our own influence. Maybe we do things with our own money in our savings. Maybe we do things with our own family backing us or, or our politicians backing us or society backing us. Now nothing wrong with all these things. Please don't get me wrong. Nothing wrong with doing things with all these. But what will happen is how many times can we sustain ourselves and how long can we go? If we continue to wait on other energies, we're not going to be able to go for too long. And the eagle is smarter that way. The second, the eagle, they master, they're master flyers. Eagles are master flyers. As a result of being able to learn how to fly on those strong wind turbines, eagles consider, are considered master flyers. They can fly to heights that no other bird can fly. They have been seen flying even as far as airplanes. In the same way as Christians, how can we learn to fly higher and higher? God has put in us an ability to get higher and higher. But why is it that we are not going to get higher? That's because we are wasting our energy on things that are not useful to get us higher. The third, eagles are master fishermen. They are master hunters. They are master fishermen. <coughs> I don't know if you've <coughs> excuse me, noticed, as I was watching, you will never ever find, even once, an eagle who spots a prey down, whether it be a fish in, in, in a pond or a lake, or whether it's a small animal running on the ground. You will never ever find, very rarely, but you will never ever find, even once, an eagle, eagle missing its target. Not even once. I was watching a couple of days back, and they were showing this mother eagle who was getting ready to make its nest. And it had only one eye. Not two eyes, it had one. One was, one was hurt, one was injured. And with one eye, it never missed even one target whenever it went to catch prey. One eye, it would catch its prey the first attempt, not even second or third attempt. They are master fishermen. In our lives, when we say we love Jesus, when we say we represent the kingdom of God, when we say we want to follow God, what are we, what are we thinking in our minds? Are we master fishermen to be able to go and help people understand that this is what God is to people. This is the love of God. This is the way God can help you. Can we do the same thing? Can we, when, when we focus on the target, can we go and get it the first time and not miss on it? How come we don't target our things? How come we don't look at our things and say, I want to get it the first time? You know, it's important for us to understand whenever God wants us to do something and be something, he wants us to be at its best. He wants us to be at our best. He wants us to be at what He is in, in, implanted in us, what He is inputted in us. And so, eagles are master fishermen. They would never, ever uh, leave a target or miss a target. Job chapter 9, verse 26, it says, They slip by like reed boats, like an eagle that swoops on its prey. The Bible keeps on talking about reflections and tips and characteristics and traits of eagles just to help us understand uh, why is it important for us to consider certain things. The fourth, the eagle flies alone. If you've noticed other birds, they always like to fly in packs. They like to fly in groups. The eagle always is alone. It never ever flies together. Another good thing about an eagle is 
when two eagles mate, when a, when a female eagle and a male eagle mates, they are in life together, they will never separate. Isn't that amazing? When two, when two of them come and they mate, the two of them will stick together for life. They will never leave each other. And one of the aspects of even flying alone, even though they are together, they fly separately. Now this whole aspect of flying alone is not trying to prove arrogance, is not trying to prove over smartness. But the eagle is trying to help itself understand something. I am not dependent on anybody. I can fend for myself. I can handle this alone. It doesn't matter what enemy comes, it doesn't matter who comes to attack. I can manage my life alone. And <coughs> excuse me, as, as, as followers of Jesus, sometimes it's good for us to understand it's okay for us to be alone. You know, sometimes we are so used to having people encourage us all the time. So used to leaning on people for, for, for encouragement and, 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 and help and whatever. It's good for us to be able to be alone. There were a lot of people who were alone in, in, in their life. David was alone when he took on Goliath. You know, lots of people of God. Peter was alone. Moses was alone. They never had big people and council and committee members and, and team members. They never had anybody. They were all alone. A lot of times the Bible talks about Jesus being alone. You see, there is something in loneliness. I'm not saying all the time we need to live a lonely life. No, don't get me wrong. I'm saying there is strength in loneliness. And sometimes when we get to be alone, we get to understand a lot of things what God wants to talk to us. Sometimes when we are with company, we don't get those things. We don't learn of those things. And loneliness helps us to understand who we are, who God is, what God wants to be to us, who we are in God. Many times I've seen when we're in company, we, we normally tend to take strength off the company, not from God. We tend to depend on people rather than we depend on God. And the eagle teaches us a very, very simple lesson. Fly alone. It's good to fly alone. Don't always wait for people. You know, go alone. Try life alone. Make sure things are happening even alone. Because the fact that you're alone helps you understand God is with you. You trust God more. When, when you set out alone, you will begin to trust God 100%. But when you are always with people, there is always a little tendency and a little, you know, temptation, if you want to call it, to ask people for help. And so eagles fly alone. The fifth, eagles live on very high ground. You will never find an eagle on some local tree. Never. It's always on some very high tall tree very high mountain top, some peak, some big, very, very tall place. Eagles always are on high ground. If you look at if you look at the biblical principles of the kingdom of God, God always places us on high ground. He is never placing us low. He's never placing us inferior. He's always placing us on high ground. Now the problem with us is we don't know how to remain on high ground and we come faster to the lower ground. Because of many things. It can be a lot of factors. It can be insecurity, it can be impatience, it can be lack of faith, it can be a lack of wisdom, a lack of understanding. It can be a lot of these factors. But the eagle always chooses to be on high ground. Now, one of the things that I feel, and I think is true also, is the eagle, when it's there, it, it has a complete view of what it wants to do. You know, the eagle can see kilometers away. It can see kilometers away, even as high as 10,000 feet. As high as 10,000 feet, an eagle can find a chicken in a farm. It can find a small chicken in a farm as far as 10,000 feet. Even the farmer might not find his chicken in the same farm. Even 20, 20 meters away, the farmer also might be able to, where's the chicken, where's the chicken? The eagle, 10,000 feet away, will know where the chicken is. And if it swoops down, it's gone. The chicken is gone. 
Another character of the eagle is it can swoop down on prey that is three or five times heavier than its weight. I was watching the video and they were saying how an eagle swoops into trees and catches big monkeys and takes them. You know what's the weight of a monkey? I'm not talking about a baby monkey, I'm talking about a full grown adult monkey. Nothing less than 15 kilos is each monkey. 10 to 15 kilos. What is the weight of an eagle? Probably 5 or 6 kilos. 